Today on CityCast Philly, here in the state, liquor and wine sales are controlled by one entity, Pennsylvania's Liquor Control Board. And laws are tight. I'm speaking with a reporter about how a new pop-up shop in the city found a way to bypass the state's liquor store system. It's Tuesday, December 20th, 2022. I'm Trinae Noree, and this is CityCast Philly. Michael Klein, you cover food and the restaurant scene for the Inquirer. You found a new liquor store downtown that doesn't sell Tito's or Jack Daniels or Fireball. Tell us about that. So let me tell you about Bottled. Bottled is a, technically it's a distillery that rebottles and relabels uh, brands that are not currently sold in Pennsylvania. And it's sort of hard for people to understand it. It took me a, a while to get through and figure out what what this is all about. So a small batch distillery, let's say Delta Dirt out of Helena, Arkansas, um, they don't have the money or the resources to deal with the Pennsylvania Liquor Control Board, which, as you said, controls all the wine and spirits in Pennsylvania. It costs a lot of money, you know, with licensing fees and right. transportation and all that stuff to bring the stuff into Pennsylvania. So they're not their products are not available in Pennsylvania. But, you know, what if you travel and you really like that brand and you or you're curious and you want to try a new brand? Well, legally, you couldn't get that in Pennsylvania until this business opens. Tell me about the owner. So the distiller and his name is Andrew Awerda. He's the guy who invented uh, or started bio- bottling a number of, of brands like um, uh, Blue Coat Gin, for example. He started that in 2005. And um, Andrew gets the same spirits from the manufacturer, from the distillery, and they ship it up in big containers, like 20-gallon containers or barrels or whatever it is. And they bring it to their, their plant in King of Prussia. And in King of Prussia, they actually have the actual bottles that the distillery will have, say, in this case, in Arkansas, and the labeling and all the other stuff, you know, the special caps or whatever. And he and his employees legally bottle this distilled spirit, put the labels on it. The labels do read bottled in, you know, King of Prussia, Pennsylvania, uh, and Andrew legally sells it. And so he doesn't have to go through the state's uh, system. You still pay sales tax on it because you're buying it, in in this case, in Philadelphia. But um, you're not, Pennsylvania is not collecting the the liquor tax. It's easy to call it a loophole, but it really isn't a loophole. It's actually a facet of the law, which was changed, uh, I guess, about five or six years ago. So what opened in November of this year? This was the bottled store. The store is actually branded as bottled, and that's that's a, a weird spelling. You look at it and you think, what? Yeah, it's <laughs> B-O-T-L-D, <laughs> but pronounced bottled. <laughs> bottled, right. So he took a storefront on 18th Street near Rittenhouse Square, and um, he set it up fairly modestly. I mean, there's just bottles and a few store displays. It's not like this fancy place, but you can go in, and he allows tasting, which a lot of people are taking advantage of because they may have heard these of these products, but they want to try them. So uh, he, it's a, a tasting room. He's doing it right now. It's in its beta phase, but eventually he's, it's going to be built out into a, a nicer store. Uh, he's also going to open a tasting room and, and retail store in King of Prussia, PA, where his bottling place is. So, Mike, can you bring us back a little bit? Why can't we buy beer, liquor, and wine at one place in Pennsylvania? That is the Pennsylvania liquor laws. Uh, it's one of those things where it's, I guess it would be easy to say it's always been done that way. Some of it is because of the lobby, the the union that represents state store workers or you know the wine and spirit workers is very powerful and they don't want privatization. Privatization would lead to a one-stop shop. But uh, beer, traditionally, and I guess this dates back to 1933 when, after Prohibition, beer has always been sold through beer distributors. It's a different system. So essentially, this makes the Pennsylvania Liquor Control Board, as you say, it's really a powerful player in this industry, right? 
Well, the PLCB is, I think, the fifth largest purchaser of wine and spirits in the world or something like that. You know, think about it. Every single bottle of wine, every single bottle of gin, vodka, whiskey has to be purchased through the PLCB. And that's an awful lot of stuff. This is a multi-billion dollar a year enterprise with, you know, thousands of stores and distribution. And, you know, they only, a few years ago, you couldn't buy, for example, a bottle of wine in or a, a bottle of anything in a supermarket, for example. Right. So they're loosening the laws. Right. And liquor laws were pretty tight, like you said, back at the end of Prohibition. But then Governor Tom Wolf loosened some of those restrictions, right? Yeah, that was in, I think, 2015, because I think the Act 39, which is what it is, uh, kicked in around 2016. For example, it allowed you know this bottle to, to exist. This guy could have co- competition coming up, but where Andrew's strength here is he has incredible networks of, of people. Like he's in the distillery business, right? So he knows a lot of these small distillers from around the country. And in that case, once they found out about um, Bottled, they, they're reaching out to him to sell the product. So how do these current uh, liquor laws in Pennsylvania really impact smaller distillers? Well, they they shut them out. Just the current law, it's just so onerous to get your product to market. And that's really what it is. You can, in other states that aren't control states, New Jersey, for example, if a, uh, a small distillery wants to sell in New Jersey, for example, it's just a, a business transaction. They don't have to sell to some New Jersey entity. They sell to Roger Wilco or wherever. They can just deal with them directly or go through a distributor. But in Pennsylvania, you can't do that. Right. So now with Bottled, this is a unique relationship between Andrew and independent distillers. And that really speaks to entrepreneurship and the importance of collaboration that's needed to sell spirits in Pennsylvania. Yeah. There's one other important thing that a lot of these, uh, there's been a, a movement in the last decade, I guess, about the last decade, in both beer and spirits, not so much wine, to get more producers of color, you know, uh, distillers and brewers who are black, brown people. And a lot of these are small startups, the same way they're they're just small enterprises. And like, as I was mentioning before, Delta Dirt out of Helena, Arkansas, um, they're, it's a black family. They grow their own sweet potatoes. They make their own vodka. Andrew has a relationship with them. And I'm not a vodka drinker, but um, <laughs> it, the sweet blend vodka that, that they're selling is $29 a bottle. So it's comparably priced to, I guess, mid-range vodka. It's not, you know, it's not the highest end, but, you know, it's priced, I guess, around what Tito's is. And uh, it's he's selling it. He's selling it well. Mike, can we expect to see more stores like this pop up shop bottled in the city or even the state? I would think they there will be because uh, there's a demand for people love craft stuff. You know, it's one thing you bring a bottle of Tito's somewhere and, you know, you make friends. But, you know, you bring in something that's more unique, something a little different. So I think there's a demand for it. I think that once people see this is in a way it's a proof of con- concept so if bottle does well and if people in the distilling industry with distilling licenses when they find out that hey uh, you know Andrew's making a fortune here you're, you're going to see a lot more of them because uh, you know why should he get all the business Michael Klein food and restaurant writer for the Inquirer thanks so much for being on CityCast Philly absolutely my pleasure it's great talking to you We'll have a link to Mike's full story on Bottled in our show notes. And here's what else Philly's talking about. Overdoses are spiking in North Philly. According to the Inquirer, the 19140 zip code, which includes the Hunting Park, Nice Town, Tioga, and Franklinville neighborhoods, saw a 66% rise in fatal overdoses in three years. And education and other resources have been scarce. But outreach teams from the Philadelphia Department of Public Health are giving some deli owners naloxone, fentanyl testing strips, and flyers in the neighborhoods. 
The Marian Anderson Historical Residence and Museum in South Philly recently received a $250,000 grant. According to the Philadelphia Tribune, the building had been closed since 2020 because of the pandemic and also from flooding damage. But now the museum says it is set to reopen in April. Anderson was a classical singer, civil rights figure, and a Philly native. And here's some good news. A local org called West Philly Bunny Hop is cooking 500 meals for community fridges this season. And that's all thanks to a generous donation from BLM Philly. Check out their Instagram page, Bunny Hop PHL, for more info. That's all for today here on CityCast Philly. If you enjoyed the show, why not tell a friend? Rate the show, leave us a review, and hit that subscribe button. Be sure to sign up for our morning newsletter, too. It's called Hey Philly. We'll be back tomorrow morning with more news from around the city. Bye. Pennsylvania's.